Hello curious learners, in this lesson we will be solving for x with one step subtraction equations. Inside of this course there is also the previous lesson on one step addition equations and we're going to continue to follow these steps and learn how to solve for x. The first thing we need to make sure that we review is inverse operations. Inverse means opposite. So when we're talking about inverse operations, we're talking about the operations that undo each other or the operations that are opposite of each other. Addition and subtraction are one example of inverse operations. Adding and subtracting are opposite. They undo each other adding money and taking away money are examples of things that are opposite so they are inverse looking forward multiplication and division are also inverse something to keep in mind but not something you're going to need for this immediate lesson but you will need to know that when you continue through this course all right let's get started how to solve for x with subtraction equations we're going to follow these steps of finding our variable, asking ourselves what happened to the variable or what's connected to it, and then doing the inverse to both sides of the equation. Here's my first equation, x minus 3 equals 8. Now, you might look at this equation and think, wow, this is pretty easy. I know that 11 minus 3 is 8, and I can plug that in and solve it in my head. So why do I need to follow these steps? Well, I'm going to answer that for you. If you practice with these three steps, you will be able to solve the equations no matter how complicated they get. When they throw in decimals and they throw in negatives and they throw in fractions even, if you continue to follow these steps, if you get good at these steps and you practice these steps, solving those future equations will be a lot simpler. So I highly encourage you to not skip out on these steps. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. I'm going to first find my variable. X is my variable. What happened to X or what's connected to it? Minus 3. It's X minus 3 equals 8. So I'm going to do the inverse to both sides. In other words, I'm going to add 3 to both sides of this equation as you see over there on the right. So now I have X minus 3 plus 3 on the left side of the equal sign and 8 plus 3 on the right the positive and negative 3's cancel each other out you're left with x by itself on the left and 11 as your answer on the right now just in case I make a mistake with math I want to always make sure to check my work so here's how I'll do it I'm going to take my original equation x minus 3 equals 8 and I'm gonna plug that number into the equation 11 minus 3 equals 8, 8 is equal to 8. Good. So 11 minus 3 is equal to 8, so I've been able to solve and check that equation. It's really important to check your work. Checking your work before you have to submit it on a test is almost like cheating. You know your answer is right before you even submit it, but it's not cheating, it's doing math which is great. If I could do that on an English test, know that my answer is 100% correct before I submit it every single time, I would definitely do that. And with the great thing is that with math, you can do that. So highly recommend that you check your work before you get started. All right, time for some practice. You can definitely do this. Go ahead and solve this equation. X minus six is equal to 12. Here are your steps listed over here on the or left. Go ahead and solve that one. All right, let's take a look at the actual answer. I'm going to find my variable. The variable is always the letter, so in this case it's going to be x. In fact, for this whole lesson it's going to be x, so we could almost just set that in there. What happened to x or what's connected to x? Minus 6. So I'm going to do the inverse or the opposite of, of subtracting 6 to both sides of the equation. And the reason I do it to both sides of the equation is that if you do something to one side of an equal sign, to keep it balanced, you have to do it to the other side. So there we go. x minus 6 is equal to 12. I'm going to add 6 to both sides. That keeps it nice and balanced. And there's my solution. Negative 6 plus 6 gives me just x by itself on the left, and 12 plus 6 is equal to 18. 
Now, the number one mistake that people make when looking at a question like this is, let me just back up two steps, often people will look at that and say, oh, 12 and 6, well, I know that 6 and 6 is 12, so they'll guess the answer of 6. All right. Instead of fully looking at the operations that are involved there. That is a very common mistake. When you try and do this in your head, sometimes you switch whether you're adding or subtracting. So keep an eye out for that one. All right. Keep an eye out for that one. And a great way to make sure that you're right is to always check. Let's do it. Check in my equation. X minus 6 equals 12. And I said my solution is 18. Let's check it. Is 18 minus 6 equal to 12? Yeah, 18 minus 6 is equal to 12. If we made a mistake along the way, you'd find it in this step. If the left side is not equal to the right side at the end, you know you've made a mistake and you can go back and, and double check your work. All right, let's move on to questions that are a little bit harder. You're going to follow the same three steps. I'd like you to go ahead and solve this question. All right. I hope the practice is helping you get better at it. We're working with some negative numbers here, so we need to keep our eyes sharp and continue to follow those steps. Our variable is x. Very nice. What happened to our variable? We subtracted 5 from both sides of this equation. Oh, sorry. We subtracted 5 from x. So we're going to add 5 to both sides of the equation. I'm sorry, I misspoke there. All right, so we've got x minus 5 over here on the left is equal to negative 14. To do the inverse, I'm going to add 5 to both sides of the equation, just like that. x minus 5 plus 5 leaves us with x by itself on the left. And on the right side of this equation, I have negative 14 plus 5. The rules for adding numbers that have different signs. If the signs are different, you find the difference. So we're going to say 14 minus 5 is 9. And then you take the sign from the larger absolute value. Whoops. So I'm going to end up with negative 9 for my final answer there. Now, I'm not as comfortable with negatives as maybe I should be. So what if I'm not completely comfortable with this answer? I can check it before I submit it. Let's do it. Look at the number x equals negative 9 and try it out. Go to my original equation. x minus 5 is equal to negative 14. I'm going to plug that answer into there and see if it works. Is negative 9 minus 5 equal to negative 14? A negative taking away even more gives me a bigger negative. So yeah, negative five, 9 minus 5 more gives me negative 14. That's my final answer. So it's great that I can check my work and make sure, especially when I get into working with subtracting and negatives, complicated stuff, great that I can check my work before I submit it. All right, follow the steps. At this point in the game, when you look at this equation, x minus negative 3 equals 20, Hopefully at this point you've been following the steps for every single question and you're saying to yourself, I can solve this one by following the steps. If you've been trying to do it in your head up to this point, it's probably getting a little confusing. If it's not confusing on this one, it certainly will be on the next one. So I encourage you, go through the steps one at a time. Solve this one on your own and then come back for the full solution. All right. Find my variable, x, that's the letter. What happened? Minus negative 3, that's what happened. What in the world? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and do the inverse. What's the opposite of minus negative 3? Well, plus negative 3. All right, so I'm going to do that to both sides of this equation. I'm going to add negative 3. Wow. Fortunately, the left side, I know it's just going to cancel out. Minus negative 3 plus negative 3, done. On the right side, I have 20 plus negative 3. Now, another way of thinking is adding is the opposite of subtracting. So instead of adding a negative, I can subtract a positive, if that makes sense. 
think it makes more sense when I can show it to you. But anyway, so instead of doing 20 plus negative 3, I can do 20 minus 3. They mean the same thing. So there we go. 20 minus 3 is 17, or 20, a positive 20 plus a negative 3 will give me a positive 17. Now, again, I'm working with positives. I'm doing a minus negative situation. I definitely want to check my work. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Is um, x minus negative 3 equals 20. I'm going to take my 17 and plug it in there. 17 minus negative 3 equals 20. Now, as I tell my students, every time I see that minus negative, I change it to a plus. That means 17 plus 3. Wow, now it looks really easy. 17 plus 3 is definitely equal to 20. We have the correct answer. Nicely done. For our final question, I've decided to throw at you a whole lot of negatives. You still have these three steps, and I encourage you to follow them as you're solving the last question of the day, which is x minus negative 6 equals negative 7. Lots of negatives there. Go ahead and solve that one. All right, I start out by finding my variable. Variable is x. What happened? Minus negative 6. The inverse of subtracting negative 6 is to add negative 6 to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to do that right here, plus negative 6. They cancel out on the left, which is good because that looks really confusing. Minus negative 6 plus negative 6 cancel out, and I'm left with x on the left. Negative 7 plus negative 6 gives me negative 13 because 7 plus 6 is 13, and they have the same sign. So I'm adding a negative plus a negative. I get an even bigger negative. But sometimes those rules of negatives confuse me, so I'm going to check my work. Is x minus negative 6 equal to negative 7 when x is equal to negative 13? Let's see. Plug it in right there. Negative 13 minus negative 6. Whenever I see that minus negative, I change it to a positive. So it changes into negative 13 plus 6 negative 13, I have a negative and a plus 6. The signs are different, so I have to find the difference between them and take the sign of the larger number. 13 is larger than 6. So I'm going to have my final answer be negative 7 is equal to negative 7. My work is correct, and so I can say that that is the correct solution. I hope that you were able to get negative 7 or negative 13 as your final answer on this one um, for your x value. That shows that you followed the steps and that you know how to do it, and you should be feeling pretty comfortable with it. Just remember two things. First, follow the rules. Second, practice the rules. We've done about five or six practice questions. Make sure that you do some more on your own. You can write them out on your own pretty easily. Make sure to check your work, and you'll be able to solve all the questions as you go. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.